Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Justin over here with Sharbecue. Today we got a fiance's quarantine birthday dinner for you. So we're going to be cooking on the Traeger. We're going to get some steaks and a couple lobster tails, some asparagus going for you. Um, I'm just showing you here that I got that nice prime ribeye uh, from our local giant. You got to do what you can when you're on quarantine. Um, we're just going to get it opened up and seasoned here. And they actually had some really nice steaks today, good intermuscular marbling. Uh, you can see this fat here. Make sure that when you go to pick out a steak, you really want to look for stuff that has good marbling on the inside. And that's these just striations of fat here going through. The uh, eye and the cap are two different parts of a ribeye. You can see the eye is the big part in the middle, and then the cap is that part that runs across the top left. Um, that's obviously going to be a little bit more fatty, but I tell you, that's that's the best part of a ribeye. So when we start with our seasonings here, we're just going with coarse ground uh, sea salt, some crushed black pepper. I always suggest crushing it fresh. Don't just use the shake pepper. It is different. Uh, and then we're going to finish with just some garlic powder. So real basic seasonings. I like to taste the meat rather than some fancy marinade. Um... You just want to make sure to get a nice, even coating throughout the whole thing. This is a pretty thick steak, as you'll see here. Um, so you can go pretty liberal with your seasonings. Uh, it's not going to overpower the meat when you have this much steak to work with. Um, again, just make sure to coat the top, bottom, all the sides, everything. You want to get a good seasoning on all of your meat whenever you cook. Uh, we are going to be cooking this on the Traeger at 225 for about an hour. It went a little over. It's a thicker steak, so um, really just, just have a good instant read thermometer and give it a check in the center of the meat periodically just to see where you're at. But after we get this seasoned up here, we're going to move over to the uh, lobsters, lobster tail, and we're going to do that two ways today. So I'll show you two different ways to prepare your, your lobster. First one's going to be the fancy way. Uh, this is really presentation only. It does not change the flavor of your lobster. It doesn't change anything. It doesn't change cook time. Um, but for this way, we're just going to take some regular old kitchen shears, go down the back crest of that lobster shell, um, and you're going to want to cut almost the whole way down. So we're going to leave this last little piece of shell intact um, what that does just keeps it from falling apart basically uh, so we're gonna go to the underside here and I'm gonna show you that you want to keep your fingers right along this ridge right here uh, that's where your pressure points gonna be and that's where you're gonna really pivot the top shell out uh, you're looking to crack right at your underhand fingers uh, and that's just going to allow you to remove the meat, and then we're going to set it on top of the uh, reformed shell. But this is just a tedious process. Uh, again, just make sure your fingers are on, on that line, because that's where you want to pivot, not in the center of the lobster like it would tend to do if you didn't have any pressure at all. Um, you'll feel a little snap. It depends on how fresh your lobsters are and everything, how, how big that snap's going to be. But once you get everything worked back, uh, we're just going to find a s space on the edge where your finger can slide in between the meat and the shell. And apologize for the camera here, but you just get your finger in there and you'll, you'll feel when it starts to release. Um, and then just work your finger back. And all you're trying to do is separate the meat from the shell. And you'll see it's got a little red coloration. That's when you know that you are on the outside of the meat and you're not just tearing through the meat itself. And once you feel it pop there down at the end, just work your way over to the other side. You're going to do the same thing. Just run your finger down. This is the easiest way that I've found to do this. Uh, if anyone knows any any tricks, please feel free to leave a comment down in the uh, section below. I'd love to know how to make this easier, but this is the way the fiance really likes it, so this is the way that I, I end up doing it all the time. Um, and once you have your finger worked down both sides and that meat has released from that top part of the shell, you're going to come back down underneath and work the bottom. And like I said, you're, all you're doing is releasing the meat from the shell itself. 
uh, our goal here is to take that meat and then set it down on top of a reformed shell when we're done to cook it. And really this does, it does end up turning, looking a lot better than the other style that I'll show you here in a second. Um, once your meat's totally released, this is something I probably should have done earlier, but I do it now anyway. Uh, this last little shell that you had cut through, you're going to cut a little relief into that to allow your meat to come up and not just be shredded by that. So you see I just cut a little bit out here, not even taking the whole thing apart because you still want the structure of that shell. Um, but that's just going to allow your tail meat to s easily sit on top. Uh, so you see, you just kind of work it out there and then you're going to set it right on top. And that's, that's exactly how we're going to cook it. It gives a beautiful presentation for that lobster tail. And it, when, once it's cooked, you can just rip it out from the bottom part of that shell. Um, so that this way, the shell will sit right on the grill and the meat is raised up off of it. And here I'm going to show you the easy way. So that took a couple minutes there to do that. Um, and it, it, it looks beautiful. But this is how I do it when I'm in a pinch here. We're just going to take the knife, solid pressure. You want a sharp knife. Uh, you're going to push that right down, cut in between, spread them apart. I normally like to leave the part that is closer to the head connected uh, so that it's just easier to handle when I'm grilling. In theory, you could just cut these straight in half and cook them separately, but it just makes it easier to grill. Um, so now that we have them all cut up, uh, we're just going to season them, and this is an excellent seasoning. Roasted garlic, rosemary, and sea salt spice blend. Um, just picked this up at, I think it was on Marshall's or something. It was the most random store, but I'll tell you what, this blend is excellent. It goes on everything, and it, it pairs well with it. Uh, we use this on chicken. You'll see me later use this on our asparagus that we'll be grilling, and... Uh, yeah, it's just, it's great all around. And as it says here, it's going to be cooked just under 400 degrees for about 15 minutes. Basically, you're cooking for a color here. Uh, it's always been the best way that I've found to cook lobster is not time or temp, just cook for that color. Um, while it's on there, we are going to be using some basting butter. So this is my version of that. It's very easy. Um, you could just use straight butter. You could use butter with a little bit of salt. If you like a little heat, throw some cayenne in there. Uh, do your thing. Uh, here I'm just heating it up for, I think I did 30 seconds in the microwave. I don't want it liquid. You still want a little bit of, a little bit of chunk in there. But as you can see, I'm just mushing it up here, trying to get as much surface area as I can. Um, we're going to come in with that, uh, with some minced garlic first. Uh, this is just regular. This is not fresh. I, I, we go through a lot of garlic here at the house, so I end up just buying the big jugs of it from uh, from our local grocer. But uh, all you're trying to do is just mix this in. I'm, no real rhyme or reason to how I'm doing it. You could do it with a fork. You could press it with your hands. You can do whatever you really want. But throw in a little bit more of that uh, roasted seasoning in like I said it goes with everything and it's already on the lobster so we're just gonna add a little bit more in here um, just kind of work that around get everything uh, situated in this butter you want it evenly distributed um, and again I don't like going with a completely liquid basting I like a little bit of meat to it so once this is pretty well mixed I'm just gonna let it go here um, let it do its thing. It's sitting out at room temp, so it is going to kind of liquefy a little bit more. I think it was probably about 10 more minutes before I got it on the smoker, or I'm sorry, on the grill. Um, and like I said, we're going to do some asparagus as well. These have just been sitting in their ends in water. You can cut off the bottoms and work with the rest of it. So once I've removed all the ends, we're going to toss them. And then I'm going to get this on a pan with some uh, extra virgin olive oil. And we'll season it from there. So 
I have a little bit of OCD sometimes, and I since I have a nice clean cut there on the bottom, I like things to be lined up. You'll see me messing with that as I season it here, but get everything out evenly distributed because you want your uh, seasoning to coat everything, not just get clumpy. And we're just going to do some uh, EVO and then a, almost exactly what you saw me do with the butter. We're going to throw some garlic on here and then throw that seasoning on and that is it. I don't mess with them anymore. Um, you could throw some salt on here. You could throw some coarse ground or I, I'm not a huge fan of the shaker salt, but you know, if that's what you got and you want to use it, go for it. Um, asparagus are pretty easy. They, you just don't want to overcook these. They, they aren't going to take long on your grill. Uh, you like to get a little crunch in them still whenever you bite through but yeah again me just lining them up because for some reason if they're even that makes a difference and uh throwing some garlic on here i'm just using my fingers to help me evenly distribute it rather than putting a spoonful here and a spoonful there and i th think you're looking for about a tablespoon a little bit more for one bundle uh, that seemed to be plenty and then we're going to come back with that same seasoning and you just want you want a nice coat on it and don't go too liberal with this um, let the asparagus be the main flavor this is just adding a little bit and then we're just gonna toss it I like to try and work uh, the ends around underneath when I'm tossing stuff uh, if that makes sense and just make sure you got a nice even coating here we're going to go out to the Traeger with the steak. It's about that time. Uh, it was a little windy today, so we were running about 10 degrees under. And on my grill, I know that the left side is the hot side. Middle is hot because the firebox is right underneath. So I want to go low and slow. I'm going to go off to the right, right by the exhaust for this. And as you can see, that salt, pepper, garlic that we put on there has kind of liquefied. It's It's been set for about 15 minutes. Um, here we have the... Uh, lobster tails going on uh, I put them on the top strictly because I knew I was going to be throwing the asparagus on uh, shortly after this uh, they they don't need direct heat especially not when they're cooking like this so there's no real reason to put them on the bottom uh, just got them at the top and I'm running about 390 380 390 uh, once they're on we're just going to grab some of that basting butter that we made and throw that on top of it. I was grilling some lemons there. Like I said, we had a feast. So uh, fiance is actually behind me eating crab legs as I'm doing this. And uh, if you've never roasted your lemons, or I'm sorry, grilled your lemons before you use them, that it is a game changer. Uh, it will make that lemon so much more robust in flavor. Um, but you just want to get a little butter on your lobster here and then we're going to get this closed up and let them start and take note of the color of the lobster right now that it's kind of like a grayish uh, just not not a very pretty color uh, so now we're going to check on the steak as you can see there's a little hole here where I go and I I cheated and checked before I made the video but we were still still a little bit under just about 45 minutes in I'm shooting for 120 to 125 when I pull a steak uh, because I knew I was going to end up searing this on the uh, gas grill. I stayed around 120 as a pull temp, and we'll see that here in a bit. But I'm about to put the asparagus on. I know they don't take long, so I gave the lobster maybe about 5, 10 minutes before I did this uh, to start cooking. But we're just going to take it. I sprayed a little bit of cooking spray on there just to make sure it doesn't stick. We're just going straight on the grill. Um, I do have my grill set at about half, about 50% um, for this, and that's just where it was sitting today. That That's going to change depending on your weather, depending on sunlight and wind and all that good stuff. So just do you do you to get around 400. Uh, we're just going to come back when it, I put the asparagus on. Sadly, I dropped my baster and had to go wash it, but I wanted to just give some more butter on top of those 
tails. Um, and you can be generous with this. In all honesty, most of it is going to run out. But there's not much that goes better with lobster tail than just butter. And let's be real here. Uh, so just giving a little coating to them. And then we're going to get this uh, cinched back up and let them cook. Uh, what you're looking for with the lobster, you can see that the actual shell has already started to change colors on this. It hasn't fully gotten to where I like it, but you're looking for a white meat. Uh, you don't want it to have that kind of just musty look on it. Uh, still sitting great on temp. We're just going to go in here and I flipped them and decided that I didn't want to lose any down the grates, so we're just going to roll it instead. Uh, you just want to make sure not to just cook one side of your asparagus. It'll get real soggy on that side and crispy on the other, and your fiancé will yell at you. It'll be a terrible thing. But you're just looking for good color on these. Once you get color, pull them off. They're done. Um, and you can see here, just checking on color, it's starting to change a little bit, but it's not near where I need it yet. And we're back over on the Traeger Smoker. We're going to look at this here again, same spot, I'm just looking for the middle of the meat. And now we are creeping up to temp. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this, and then it will sit inside room temperature, lightly tented for about 5 to 10 minutes. You just want to let that meat have time to rest, and that's going to allow for all the juices to pull back into the meat, as opposed to spilling out all over your plate whenever you cut it. Here I'm just showing you, I'm at a, a little under 50% I guess on my grill, but it's right around there. Um, and these asparagus are done. There's beautiful color on those. We're going to pull them and they hit the plate and we will never see these again because, like I said, my fiance is already eating behind me. Um, and one thing I'm a stickler for is presentation. So, of course, got to make those all face the same way. Uh, you know, when you get a meal presented in front of you, the first thing you do is look at it, and you want it to look appealing. So try and go a little above and beyond for that. But while, while we're here, we're just going to throw a little bit more of this basting butter on top of these uh, and make sure to get them good and flavorful. Once they're all about done, I'll pull them down, reverse them, and put them on a hot surface. I got my grill cranked right now the whole way to 100%. Um, now I can only do this with the three that I've done this way. I'm not going to flip this one upside down because, well, it'll just fall out. But you're just looking for a little bit of that color on there. You can see a little bit of char. Probably could have gone a little bit more with these, but well, we were we were hungry. So now we got them all off. Just giving you a good look at this finished product here. Um, that one doesn't make it any further in the video. But now we got the grill turned the whole way up, and we are ready to sear this steak. So we're just going to throw a little bit of cooking oil on here, a little spray. Um, and then we're going to take this steak that we have reverse seared. So we've brought it up to temperature, and now we're going to give it a good Maillard reaction. And if you look at that plate, there's not a lot of juices, and that's what you want. You want it to stay in the steak. So now the steak's back on, just pressing it down to make sure we have good contact on our grill. Um... Like I said, we are screaming here as hard as this little Weber, Weber will push. Um, and we're giving it about a minute to a minute and a half on each side before we flip it. And you see those lines running down the center. That is the Maillard reaction. That's what you want. It is a chemical change in your steak that will give you much better flavor. And now that we got the second side done, we're just going to flip it and... Get those nice cross hatch marks that everyone likes to see on a steak. This side actually ended up doing a pretty good job overall on the first side. So I did not end up giving that another uh, time on the grill. We just went from there. And here's what everyone likes. That nice bubbling fat. And that is absolute perfection here. Um, I get it back to the cutting board and see what we got. We're going to start out with the ribeye. We're going to start in the eye portion. Just give us some nice little slices here and see what we got. And I will tell you, my camera is not doing a great job of the color. 
I th I'm not sure if it's because I turned my flash on for these shots or not, but it was getting kind of late in the night. Um, this steak looks medium and was definitely more of a medium rare. Uh, I don't know what the final temp on it was because, like I said, I'm, once it's to that 120, I just, I'm pulling it and searing it for about a minute, minute and a half each side. Uh, so we're going to get some slices out of here, but it smells incredible. So I just, yeah, well, you already know what's going to happen. Um, excellent crunch on the outside with that, that bark. Uh, very tender. Let's cut a few more slices here. Now I'm just going to separate the eye from the cap. Um, I like to cut the cap a little differently. So that's the end of the eye that I set up there. And here we got the cap. And this is the part that is normally incredibly marbled. Uh, it's going to be your juiciest part of your ribeye. Most people just love this. Um, cut a few pieces of that. And you can see this is just glistening with flavor and greatness. Um, pull apart tender, still got plenty of juice left in there. Um, this is, this is what you get. This is what you want when you get a ribeye. Yeah, that's, that's what you're going for. Uh, so that was delicious. We're going to try the lobster here. And again, I'm just eating with my fingers. I've been cooking this food for a couple hours now, basically between prep and everything. So I'm ready to just dive in. Um, and this lobster just pulls right out you can do this with a fork if you're trying to be fancy but let's be real um, and then I'm gonna grab one of the grilled lemons that we have and just the amount of sugar that grilling them brings out in the lemon is fantastic you don't need a lot it goes a long way uh, yeah so that was delicious but like always, like, comment, subscribe. You guys want to see more? You want to tell me what to cook? I'm more than happy to do it for you. Um, stay safe out there, guys. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face.